that were not well received. Even have you ever wanted to give a constructive criticism to someone on something, but held back from doing so because you didn't know how you can convey your ideas across? Mm -hmm. This video is all about this issue. In this video, I'm going to share with you the 10 powerful tips that will help you construct or master your own ability to provide criticism constructively. So let's get started. Stay tuned in the season. So today we came up. I came up with uh, another idea, and that is about uh, the lesson is about how you can give uh, constructive criticism. I hope uh, you may have this this lesson be useful to you. So let's start with looking at the definition of key terms before we start the lesson. Firstly, critic. Critic is uh, defined as written or an oral evaluation of something. Uh, maybe that is uh, may happen in your workplace, anything, any any place. Uh, when you say constructive, when you say constructive, it means um, uh, it ca it's carefully considered and uh, designed to be helpful or do or improve something. Uh, let's distinguish between criticism and constructive criticism, because uh, most of us are not. Uh, we are not constructive critics, so that's why uh, we need to distinguish them. So, when you say constructive criticism, it is the process of delivering both ends, that is the positive as well as the negative ends. So, here we are targeting to improve the person so that we can promote him for further development in his profession or in workplace. On the other hand, criticism is often viewed as negative aspect. Criticism focus on negative aspects. On the other wise, so whereas constructive is focused on growth in the program, so it touches both sides. Um, let's continue with uh, the importance of criticism. Why do we give criticism? What I can say is here is uh, knowing how to effectively criticize is a skill you will use in your entire life because being able to give effective criticism or constructive criticism give you the opportunity to be positively influential both personally as well as professionally. Uh, it can be even more useful in two ways. The first one is when you have this skill new ideas and perspective will be discovered among people. Argument logic is tested. Possibly you may learn your shortcomings because you can learn from your mistakes. So let's continue with uh, the goal. Teachers give criticism in research papers, in seminars, in classrooms, in different places. But most of us are in short of being constructive. So we have to understand why we give criticism at the first place. So constructive criticism focuses or its goal is firstly it is about building and improving. It's not about identifying what's wrong. Look the for the word even. Constructism comes from the word construct. Construct means building something. So something constructive should be something positive that builds an individual up. It's not about tearing down the individual. Therefore, what I can say here is the goal of constructive criticism is about improving the behavior, the problem, the situation, or something that happens due to the behavior of the person while consciously you avoid personal attack and blaming. That's the goal of constructive, constructive uh, criticism. Let's continue with the tips then. So we're going to see one by one. Let's see tip one. Being constructive criticist means you have to be polite. So what comes here is number one as a rule of thumb is is about um, respecting the individual. And uh, how you do that is being polite. So respect the individual by focusing the criticism on the behavior that needs to be changed, not the person but the behavior, the situation, what people actually do or say is the focus of constructive criticism. So what I advise you here is or I recommend to you here is don't insult or give order. For instance, if say do this, go chain, fix this, 
this kind of orders um, may create a person feel like they are not even listened. Even uh, it can be difficult for them to swallow what you have given to them. Therefore, what I can say here is you have to see a better approach. Uh, let's continue. Number one is, I mean, number two is don't personalize. Don't personalize the criticism. Here, that means your focus should have to be on the situation, not the person. Separate the work from the personality. Um, look this example. It could be uh, better. It's better to use an example. The first statement, you are really boring public speaker. Once your students have presented a presentation, they say this one, it's going to be hurtful. It's negative criticism because I think your presentation could use more energy in the vision. This is positive criticism. It can build, construct a person for better improvement. Uh, again, look this uh, another example. You are disorganized. Negative criticism. It could be useful to use the second statement. You need to start keeping a bit schedule and incorporating a bit more structure to your work. Now here, as you can see, the focus is on the problem and the situation, not the person. The first statement is on the person. Uh, so this will prevent uh, the other person from potentially being uh, attacked. So he can listen to you. He can even make a change that you need. Uh, three, be objective. State factors, not feelings. The recipient, when you give uh, such kind of uh, criticism, the recipient gives the message and then uh, he or she is willing to do something about that problem. For instance, I hate this logo. You see? Look at the second one. I'm concerned that this logo is very complex. If we are to scale it down, we'd lose some of that rich detail. Here, as you can see, uh, the second statement takes out the feeling and that's why uh, it is factual as well as its objective. Number four is about being specific. Constructive criticism has to be specific. Allow the individual to know what kind of behavior is going to be uh, changed or considered. What, what's going on? What's going wrong? So you do this by giving specific examples and suggestions to provide ideas for improvement. So don't give general criticism. What you do is break it down, break down your feedback to key pointers or uh, key pointers or terms, and then provide the person with specific examples and suggestion on how he or she can be. Uh, improved. So that's why I put here specific feedback is actionable feedback. When you make it specific, the person knows what's wrong or she might know what's wrong and then he or she can improve it. Number five, keep your language positive. Uh, carefully framed language will have an acceptable manner to the target person. So what you need to do is here, you need to be careful about how you can set your tone because it is too much useful to the entire dialogue that uh, going to be that going to happen after a while look at this example you don't speak up enough in seminars sounds more easier to take it right it doesn't do that look at this kind i would love to hear you speak up more in seminars this kind of one is b is it's a better approach because it sounds more easier to take than the first one. Uh, number six is about sticking to I statements. Avoid or take out you out of your statements every time you are giving constructive criticism. Never say you again because it is hostile and insulting language. So what you do is instead of saying you did this wrong, focus on what is wrong. And you do that using phrases like it's my understanding that i feel blah blah let's see it in example look at the first one you are wrong that was stupid that idea is stupid you see look 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 at it look at this kind of b i believe that this won't appeal to the target audience so 
the first two statements are evaluative ones or evaluative language because it reduces the need for the receiver to respond defensively. So that's why you need to be careful over how you can use I statement. Next is about being conscious of your tone. Your tone is everything. Use a friendly, a friendly tone as much as you can because it, may, it, can, it can make or break how your feedback criticism is going to be received by the person in front of you. So let me give you an example. If you come up with an angry face, it means an insult or a signal of insult to the receiver and he can start putting his or her defense. So try to avoid aggressive, bitter, subjective tone and be, try to use objective, tolerant and humorous tone in your uh, criticism. Next, uh, do you use sarcasm? Sarcasm is mostly used by teachers in the classroom even. So what does it mean sarcasm? Try to understand ironic and satirical remar remarks tempered by humor can hurt your students or even any person. So the definition is we use sarcasm when we want to uh, say the opposite of what is true to make someone feel or look foolish. Uh, so consciously you are expected to take out such kind of um, uh, expressions. So let me give you an example. Assume that your students come up with an empty page so of an assignment and you say um, you have been working hard. You are looking on the empty page. So such statement has hurt someone's feeling. Try to avoid such language. Uh, the next uh, tip I'm going to use is uh, to give is use a straw man. I'm not a fan of here um, a sandwich, a feedback sandwich um, method that most people use. So what you do is uh, you sandwich your pointers within two complements, positive, negative, and then positive. When you do it, uh, there is something that you can lose. So that is, for instance, um, uh, this method will bury real message in the middle of conversation where you can say it can get lost or poorly realized by the person uh, taking the criticism. So I better come up with this idea. So use trauma. Trauma is, uh, means, a trauma means uh, telling a story about someone else to illustrate your point. For instance, you may use personal story, you may use uh, an inspiring story from someone who is famous uh, and uh, come up with the same thing. So this will allow you to give a constructive criticism. And number 10 is uh, just put yourself in the other person's shoes. When you give constructive criticism, you have to think what that person feels when you do things. So constructive critics try to stand in the shoes of the person being criticized and consider what things would like uh, look like from their perspective. Do you have three advantages here? The first advantage is um, it will help you not to impose your feedback. Rather, it will allow you to give descriptive and solicited feedback. Uh, secondly, it will allow you to be conscious of when you choose to give feedback. It's about time. And then it will allow you again to start, to, I mean, uh, to share information instead of giving advice. You are not supposed to give advice. Just share your information about how the person can change the situation, the problem. And again, it helps you to determine the amount of information that would be appropriate to what the receiver can use. So this all happens if you put yourself in the shoes of the person you are criticizing. Uh, these are the points I want to make to you. So. Okay, now, mastering the art of giving constructive criticism is not easy. And giving a feedback to someone won't always go in a good way because even you do it in a good way. And yes, even if you do everything right, something is may go wrong. Just let me tell you something. Remember already that like with most things in our life, mastering this constructive criticism skill will definitely get better through your own experience. So don't worry, just keep practicing what you are doing now. Thank you for watching. So if and you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and comment. Put your comments in down below my link. And uh, next Friday, I'm going to come up with another lesson. How you correct criticism constructively. But until then, 
Bye for now. I'm gonna see you next time. I'm out of here. Pop, 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 pop.